So wow, can you imagine being on the scene with either Moses or Jesus when these events took place? When their skin was dazzling because they had been in and were embodying the presence of God. Can you imagine having been bro Moses' brother Aaron or one of the three disciples that Jesus had dragged with him up the mountain to pray that day, knowing these guys as well as anyone, having grown up with them or walked miles and miles with them, having seen them at their best as they took on the mantle of God's call in ministry, and perhaps even at their worst as they doubted their own gifts or were exhausted from the miles they would walk up and down hills to share God's word and save their people. And instead of seeing them like that, they see them bright and shining like the stars or the sun. No wonder their companions were afraid when they saw this. I think I might have been afraid as well. This transformation of the regular everyday Moses and Jesus to something special, godly even. At the same time, beautiful and terrifying to all of those who are around them. As I read through these scriptures again this week, all I could think of were the special effects that they use in movies. But we're not talking about special effects here with Moses and Jesus. What people saw in them was God shining through. Moses had just come down from his time with God on Mount Sinai bearing the commandments, one of the signs and seals of God's covenant with the people when he was first perceived this way. Each time Moses went to spend time with God to seek God's guidance and hear God's voice, this transformation happened to him. He was aglow with all that God had offered to him, and I might imagine with God's confidence in the gifts and skills that he had, that he wasn't even confident in himself. In the case of Jesus, right before this story, he had spent some time with the disciples pressing them about his identity. He had asked them, well, what's the word on the street about me? Who is it that people are saying that I am? And the disciples responded, well, of course, you're Elijah or John the Baptist come back from the dead. Well, now if that ain't scary, I don't know what is. <laughs> and then Jesus asked the disciples, but who is it that you say that I am? And that moment of Peter's confession comes, you are the Messiah. This encounter with the disciples is the first time in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus shares with them the fact that he is more than just a traveling preacher or a passing fad that they had been swept up in, but rather that he is the Son of God, the one who will give his life for them, for generations to come, for us even. He was to be the savior, and now they were insiders in sharing that news. So they, when they arrived at the mountain that day, what they saw in the glow of Jesus was divine confirmation that this really was true. And the clincher, of course, that voice from heaven, this is my son, listen to him. <laughs> right? At their very essence, friends, these stories are not stories that are supposed to frighten us or make us think special effects, but rather they are stories about transformation taking something, or in these cases, someone people thought they knew, and transforming them into divine masterpieces, with faces aglow with the knowledge of God's love and care and power. I want you all to think for just a moment and try to recall if you have seen something like this in your life. Now, I don't mean sparkling people in front of you. That's a little bit too Twilight for me, those of you who have seen that movie series. But the truth is that we don't quite know what these guys looked like, but we do know it was something that took their companion's breath away. So think about those moments in your life when that has happened to you, when your breath has been taken away by someone. Perhaps... It was someone who had just heard the news cancer-free. Or perhaps you have been in the room with new parents as a baby was brought into this world. Or you have watched someone who has never had a clean sip of water take their first out of a filtration system. Have you sat in the stands and heard the bat hit the ball for the very first time and watched that little face light up? 
Or have you been present as a person begins to articulate what their faith or the prayers of their community or cards have meant on their road to recovery? Now, doing my job, I am blessed to hear these stories and to be a part of these moments all the time. And let me tell you, they are ones where I have witnessed people aglow with the love and care and wonder and power of God. People transformed right in front of me. And that is really the work that we are to be about in the church, the work of transformation. We are to take simple, everyday, ordinary things, sometimes the things that we even take for granted, and are to transform them into something that is way bigger than that, way bigger than ourselves, to be sure, as opportunities to, and ways to see God shining through. I think about that call when we have painting nights in the youth room and simple off-white cinder blocks become the means by which our young people come to feel a sense of belonging and ownership and pride and memory in this place. Or when we take carrots, hummus, hummus, your grandma's favorite casserole recipe, and a plate of brownies at a potluck and turn them into an opportunity for connection and growth in faith or a chance to serve others like through our Dining for Women program. I love it that our young people will look at pancakes and sandwiches and canned goods and pennies in a different way after this morning Shrove Sunday pancake breakfast and Super Bowl of Caring campaign as means by which we learn about and share God's love out in the world. Look at their faces the next time you serve them pancakes in the morning. And I so appreciate the way that we take the simple elements of bread and juice that we place on this table in front of us and recognize in them instead a family feast, an opportunity to remember Jesus' outpouring of wisdom and service, to recognize God's love and forgiveness and to be renewed to go out today and tomorrow to see God at work in the world and to share that recognition and our faith with others. It may be through a few simple kind words or by a few simple caring acts. It may be by a cup of coffee shared with a friend or through putting our pledge card promise in the offering plate. It may be through a trip to the grocery store to pick up a few items for the local food pantry or by volunteering to be the hands who stock those items on the shelves. It may be through some change thrown in a soup pot today or sitting down at table with someone we don't know all that well during our soup groups in the coming weeks. But in these words and actions, and these things that may, see, may seem so simple and ordinary and everyday, we are called to be the face, the hands, the feet, and the heart of God. We are called to follow God's will and to share God's love. We are called to be blessed and to be a blessing to others, aglow with God's grace and power. We are called to be transformers. So may it be so. Amen.